6 to 1 ruling by Nigeria's Supreme Court, which struck out an application on the current seeking to set aside the ruling of the court on the Imo state election. Let's take a listen to an earlier report by a rise correspondent, Chima Nwanko, on the judgments of the Supreme Court to set the stage for our discussion. So for Emekai Hedioha, Kanu Agabi asked the court to set aside its judgment of January the 14th, 2020, on the grounds that it is a nullity. However, counsel to Senator Hope Uzadema counters that the court lacks the jurisdiction to hear the case. Delivering the majority ruling, Justice Kaede Ariwola points out that asking the Supreme Court to set aside its ruling is asking it to sit in appeal over its own decisions, which he says violates the 1999 Constitution. According to him, granting the request will open the floodgates to endless litigation. He says the verdict of the Supreme Court is a finality. Lawyers are divided on the precedent set by the ruling. This is injustice at its peak. This injustice is indescribably indecipherable. I cannot decipher it. I cannot. What tells the Supreme Court that they cannot overrule their, over, their own judgment? When it is rich in error, when it's rich in freedom, when it, there are conflicting judgments. Today, the Supreme Court has affirmed its decision that Hope Uzodima was legitimately elected the governor of Imo State. It has refused the application to set aside its judgment as an abuse of court process. However, in the dissenting ruling, Justice Santos Mweze notes that the votes which were used to declare Hope Uzodema winner were in excess of the accredited votes for the election. He then set aside the judgment of the Supreme Court of the 14th of January 2020 as a nullity. He reasons that the court was misled in declaring Hope Uzadima as governor and orders his removal from office. He holds that a judgment can be set aside. In his words, a judgment or order can be set aside on the merits. This court has the power to overrule itself and has done so in the past, can revisit any decision not in accordance with justice. This court has a duty of redeeming its image. It is against this background that the finality of the court cannot extinguish the right of any person. The importance of today's decision goes to show the independence of each of the justices of the Supreme Court. The fact that uh, the decision uh, was uh, six to one shows that each justice of the Supreme Court has his independent mind to determine an issue before the Supreme Court. The fact that uh, six other justices stood on one way does not stop the other justices from dissenting from the decision of the others. The court, however, held that all parties in the case should bear their individual costs. Chima Wankwo, Arise News. Well, joining us now from our Abuja studio is Esther Uzoma, a legal practitioner, rights activist, national coordinator, proactive gender initiatives, and co-convener. Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room. Uh, thank you so much, Esther, for joining us this morning on the show. All right, Esther, can thank you hear you us? If you can much. hear us, uh, we'll, we'll like you to make sense of that judgment at first, in your own words. Well, um, the prophecies of the Supreme Court uh, is supreme. The Constitution recognizes as much to the extent that the justices express their individual views, to the extent that it's in line with the constitutional provision, particularly Section 235, which talks of finality of judgment of the Supreme Court. And so, to that extent, you know, let it be. The courts have spoken. Let it be. Or otherwise, there are issues before now agitating every legal mind. But judgment does not lie in whether it is a good or bad judgment. You must find, we must find solace in jurisprudential dialectics concerning this judgment. So that is my view. It's neither wrong nor right. It's just the judgment of the Supreme Court.
When the judgment did come in, uh, looking at talking about Imo Stable, when the judgment came in in Bayelsa State, we did see the anguish of the courts, and they went ahead to even fine the uh, litigation team that had come back to file this petition. Now, looking at the state of Imo, why do you think that we didn't have the same scenario here? Looking as the Supreme Court is trying to make sure that people understand, or these lawyers understand, that litigation must end and that the verdict of the Supreme Court is indeed final. Well, in the case where the erudite senior lawyers were fined, I find that uh, a bit curious. However, it is their decision. They were of the view that the, those caliber of lawyers should know better, and therefore they punished them. And in the case of Imo, same uh, application, review, nobody was fine. Parties were told to bear their costs. You know, there was a dissenting judgment. You see, that is why if you look at these still issues and try to decipher it or distill it on the altar of law, perhaps it will be difficult. But if you look at it, say, oh, fine, it is the Supreme Court, it's a decision. You know, you just take it like that because granted that democracy is about numbers, but it is power that determines what is counted, who is counted, when it's counted, and the outcome and the summation of numbers. So just let this be the foundation. Democracy is about numbers, but power determines who is counted, when that person is counted, what counts, the summation of whatever was counted. That is, that is clearly a matter of power. And so we have seen power over and over again coming out with decisions we do not want, we cannot understand. Sometimes we say that they are against the grind and the spirit of the Constitution, but that is power talking. And so when power makes such prophecies, what do we do? We keep quiet. Look, for instance, the Constitution enjoins the president to make appointments that will engender national unity and command loyalty so that there's no preponderance of any race in any government agency you know, or organization. But that is not what is happening. But power has decided, you see. And so if you look at the Supreme Court's decision from this view, that is, you know, what do you do with it? Okay. Uh Yes. Uh, I said we'll go on a break soon, but I have two quick questions for you. Uh, let me just ask them. Maybe when we come back from the break, you begin to respond to them. First, Justice Umweze told the other justices on that panel that the decision to uphold the victory of uh, Hope Uzodima will continue to haunt uh, the nation's electoral jurisprudence. Mm -hmm. Now, were you expecting a dissenting judgment? And what is the import of that going forward? Secondly, We've heard in both cases, in Bayelsa and Imo State, uh, the notion that the finality of the Supreme Court needs to be preserved. But my question here is, is it better to preserve an error or to correct it? Because it seems as if, with the Imo situation, we have preserved an error rather than correcting it. Uh, so you, you may begin to respond to my questions, and then I would interject and go on the break uh, when the time comes. All right, talking about errors, uh, we are talking about right and wrong, okay? Talking about errors, we are talking about perhaps what comes to the mind of a person who is not a lawyer is that it was against the grind of law, all right? But then, it, they gave reasons for that judgment, for that error. And what they are telling you now is that it was not an error. That's what the majority judgment is saying. That is it. And they gave legal reasons for what you call an error. And Justice Wednesday also gave legal reasons, you know, for that same error, that why it should be, you know, why, why the right should not be extinguished. That is human nature, prima facie human nature coming to play in the affairs of law. What, okay, Esther, The uh, bottom line is this. I'm sorry, but I did warn you over this. Actually, let's go on that break now. We'll be back to talk some more. Please stay with us.
welcome back to the morning show here on the Raj News. Esther Zoma, legal practitioner, rights activist, is with us from our Abuja studios. We are discussing the recent uh, judgment on the Emo governorship election. Uh, Esther, thank you so much for staying with us. You want to land on that point uh, when I was asking, is it better to preserve an error or to correct it? And if you were surprised at that dissenting judgment of uh, Justice and Wazey, and the import of that uh, going forward? Yes, um, uh, I, I, and I, I was saying, I was trying to make the point that whether or not it's an error, you know, you call it an error, but those fine jurists, they do not think it's an error. Remember, their decision is grounded in law, the same law, all right, that gave uh, credence to Justice Weze to anchor his dissenting opinion. It is also the same law that gave these six justices the impetus to ha anchor the decision that you now call an error. So what I'm saying is this. It is not a matter of right or wrong. It is a question of power. Power determines meaning. Giving two sets of facts, all right? Power will always choose a meaning that it, is, it likes. You must go outside. You must go outside the legalese to find reasons so that, you know, because we are reasonable people who can reason it out, they will find a level of comfort. So it is not in the, in the realm of law. It's not about law. It's not about right or wrong. It is a matter of power. Anytime two situations of equal magnitude is brought, power determines which one will assail. Like I said, like I said, Democracy, granted, is about numbers, but power determines what is counted, when it is counted, how it is counted, and even determines the summation. All right? That is politics. Remember, an elder statement did say that in politics, a tree can make a forest. We have seen the political class seep into our judicial system. We have seen them encroach. We have seen them attempt to make a mess of that sacred hall. And so you find decisions that we do not understand. But because we are reasoning beings, we have to import jurispr legal jurisprudence. Otherwise, it will drive us crazy. And so I say, it is not about right. It's not about wrong. And now, coming to the fact whether this decision will haunt us for life. Let me tell you, my sister, once this administration is over, the next administration will give another decision. That is it now. That's what power does. Okay. That is the privilege of power. Okay, Esther. So, yes. Esther, I quickly want to make a very strong import yes. here. You've talked about the privilege of power, but if you know the political scientist Jean-Jacques Rousseau, yes. he famously talked about the privilege of power, the state, and the electorate and the people that have been governed. Yeah. Where will the people, because what you are saying is a very daring precedent that if you have power, then oh, you yeah. can get the input of jurisprudence on your side, which is very damning from our democracy. Where will the voice and integrity <laughs> of the judiciary be totally upheld? <laughs> My brother, when has democracy ever been about the people? the people in power. They're the ones who make laws for the rest of us now. Hello? That is it. There's a law now ongoing in the National Assembly for immunity, all right, for principal officers of the National Assembly. That is what law, the people use law to protect themselves, particularly of certain class. Law? Let me tell you, the Constitution said power belongs to the people, but we know what, what power do we have? We are at the mercy of the political class. They're the ones who control government and our resources. Whatever they give us, we take. It is at their pleasure. They choose who to prosecute and who not to prosecute. Two people will commit the same crime in this country. One person will go to, to one person will be celebrated, another person will go to jail. Two persons will commit the same crime of fraud and embezzlement. Somebody will say, listen, I want part of this, give me part of this money. Others will end the jail. That's the decision of power. That's what power decides. There's no logic to it. The only logic is that power decides what the law is. 
power decides the outcome of justice, particularly in this our climb, until we come to a stage of political consciousness when the Nigerian people will actually realize that without us, there will be no political class. Then we'll start calling the shot. But right now, right now, power makes that decision. Were we not here? When the justices of the Supreme Court were dragged out on the streets, what happened? Their civil rights were entirely, entirely breached. What? Look at us. We are still here. Nigerians all the same. At this point, you know, Esther, no, that's it. It's, 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 it's impossible not to have this conversation and not talk about speaking truth to power. And I wonder, the goal here the, yep. to read the verdict out to the Nigerian people at, at the Supreme Court, is it to reach an end or it is it about doing justice? At what point do we relieve our judicial system of being the ones responsible for choosing who our leaders would be? Fantastic. At the point we relieve our judicial system of making this very crucial decision is when we, the Nigerian people, we must participate in the political process. Anytime we come out en masse at the local government level, councillorship level, chairmanship level, governorship level, anytime we participate en masse and watch the process, we rob the Supreme Court or indeed any judicial system of the power to impose candidates. That is it. But because the minority, less than one third of Nigerians participate in a vote, less than one third. And so you can imagine the number who actually makes this decision of who. So imagine when all of us participate in the process. When we watch the process, when we observe the process, when we guide the process, the judiciary will not have that choice. But because we do not participate, the power decides what happens, not just in, in voting, in every other sphere of life. Well, indeed, some would say and the only solution to this is electoral reforms. Well, presently, INEC is having a retreat, and they've talked about amending the electoral law. Um, some over 30 sections they're talking about. What do you think should be topping these uh, reforms that we're talking about? And we do know that without the National Assembly and the executive, this becomes nonsense again. Uh, what's your take on all of this? It is not a matter. Well, the reforms are welcomed. You know, uh, for instance, we need an electoral offenses commission so that whoever us is God, whoever, no matter how big, that person should at least be brought under a law. All right, and prosecuted to the full extent of the law. The political party should be punished. For instance, the provision, if you look at the Bialsa case, that any political party, I think it's section 31 of the Electoral Act, that feels a candidate that is not, dis is not qualified suffers a consequence. Who is going to prosecute APC? Hello? That's a, a zillion dollar question. Who will prosecute APC? In the light of the Sanfara decision, what, what, are we, what are we saying? And so what I'm talking about is this, much as we welcome the reforms, okay, that grip of power on our system, be it electoral, be it whatever system, judicial system, legislative system, that grip on power, we must demystify it. And until we demystify it, all the laws in the world cannot help us. That's what I'm saying. Until we demystify it, until we we'll ungrip it, until we, the Nigerian people, take over that power that belongs to us. Okay. As per the prophecies of the Constitution, Section okay. 40. Okay. 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 We'll see, it's to see the same thing. Okay, okay. Esther, as we start to wrap up, uh, because yeah. we're looking at matters arising. Yesterday, uh, Hope was the the governor was interviewed on another channel, and he talked about his victory, and he said, Yeah, it was well deserved for me. I want us to look forward to the 17th of March now. What do you think will happen? 17th of March, real quickly. Zamfara. <laughs> it's, it's actually unethical, you know, to make processes concerning matters before the Supreme Court. If I do that, they will penalize me. That's true. <laughs> okay, um, so in 40 seconds, you talked about the people taking, until we, the people take the power. How do we begin to take the power when we don't even show up for elections? Very quickly, in about 30 seconds. We must, we take the power by being involved. How? One thought, less than one thought, participating in the political process is not sufficient. We must be involved. But Everybody their votes don't count.
when we get when we are involved, we are the ones to ensure that our votes count. Well, that's a fine place to leave it. Thank that's you so true. much, Esther. It's always a pleasure to have you here on the morning show. Much appreciated. And that brings us to the end of the show today as well. I am Ade Sua Omoruan. I'm Rafael Yosini. And I'm Shaito Atigari. Thank you for watching. You can also follow us on all our social media handles showing now on the screen with live streaming, of course, on Arise.tv.